What's up, guys? It's Eric and Marcus from Rear Candy and Tabor back with our uh, Georgia Regional Tournament Report. Actually, it's the first one we've done. I, I've kind of given my own tournament report like at the beginning of video sometimes, but I felt like we could just do our own this time. Why not? A lot of people, I think, might be interested in that. If, if you're not, let us know, <laughs> and we won't do it again. <laughs> yeah, we'll stop doing it if you, if you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> so we recently got back from the 2017 uh, Georgia Regional. Uh, that just happened this past weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah, we're gonna give our thoughts on it and what, how we did, what deck we played, and all that. So the format for this one was gonna be standard format. So that means Primal Clash all the way up to Evolutions, which is the newest set. Uh, and largely, even though Evolutions did come out, the format really hasn't changed since rotation. Uh, Evolutions, I think, made Gardevoir a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, it made that more than just like a an anti Mewtwo deck. But other than that, really, I think everything's been largely the same. We've seen slight shifts in the meta as far as, like, deck lists uh, and tech cards and stuff like that. But overall, like, I feel like not much has changed, which makes picking a deck actually a little bit easier than normal. Right. Uh, I think the only real thing that's impacted the way uh, people's lists have been at this regional was probably the the new Giratina promo that's been getting hype. Would you maybe agree with that yeah yeah for sure um yeah because now uh greninja players are just playing a bunch of silent labs and stuff so um yeah you're more likely to run into silent lab type decks if you're playing against greninja you're more likely to not be able to like bench shamans things like that i guess yeah um yeah i think that's really the probably... only main thing that's come yeah. out that's really shaped the meta i think I... so that and like yeah like you said uh gardevoir getting dragonite and I guess Rattata, kind of. Yeah, and I think Mega Rayquaz has kind of fallen off the map, too. It's, I mean, it's seen a little bit of play here and there, but overall, that's a deck that's kind of fallen off since the beginning of rotation. Uh, Scizor as well. Uh, just Volcanion's been getting so much hype. And I think the existence of the Giratina promo, just the very existence has kind right. of shaped the game a little bit. I think, no offense, but some of the, like, I guess batter players for lack of a better term i don't mean that in a mean way um might have been gravitating more towards volcanian because they may have been thinking hey uh giratina promo is out that might make volcanian a good play uh since greninja in theory might not show up mm -hmm. so but then a lot of the greninja players just said screw it we're just gonna play greninja and play <laughs> silent lab yeah and then just kind of beat volcanians that show up right and uh yeah so that's I think really the only new thing that's really happened as far as the metagame goes. Yeah. But that kind of leads into how do we decide what deck to play. And uh, Marcus, I guess before the tournament, what was your, you know, when, when you decide you're going to go to Athens to play in this, did you have any decks in mind that you were kind of gravitating towards? Oh, yeah. I was, <clears throat> I was really leaning hard towards Greninja. Like, I was... I was like dead set on Greninja for a really long time. I was like, yeah, I'm just going to play Silent Lab and uh, it's going to go good. Like, I don't know. Like, I just, I, I, I like the way you play the deck and stuff. You get to evolve. Um, <laughs> so that's cool. Uh, there's variants that run Rare Candy in it and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, but no, I, I was just leaning really hard towards Greninja. I just thought it was, um, you know, BDIF. I was just like, this deck is so good. Like, it beats pretty much everything like it only really loses to itself like uh its own like you know being inconsistent sometimes uh but yeah no it just it just seems like a great deck and that's like what i was like so dead set on playing until uh until we had like different ideas for playing like playing a different deck and whatnot other than greninja but that's pretty much what i was i was i there i don't i don't i didn't have another deck at all in mind i was like i'm just gonna play greninja <laughs> uh I'm actually kind of the opposite. For the longest time, I had no idea uh, what I was going to play. I guess when I first decided I was going to Georgia, uh, a couple decks I started to mess with was actually Xerneas Break variants. Not necessarily the pancake uh, one that Squeaky kind of popularized and Sam Chen and all those guys, but uh, Xerneas Break Giratina seemed kind of cool. That's a deck we've messed around with before and... Uh, it's kind of fallen off the map. I think it had a little bit of hype around rotation, but no one's really been playing it. But uh, I was leaning towards that for a while just because it resists dark. Your main attacker's a non-EX. Uh, Salamence came out, so that helped it with its Volcanian matchup, which I think previously wasn't that great. 
Um, the Giratina promo, since you play four Fairy Garden, you pretty much win the Stadium War with Greninja, which, so with the Giratina promo, I felt like that really helped its Greninja matchup, which is probably its other bad matchup as far as the main decks in the meta went. So in the early stages, I was really leaning towards that, uh, especially since it has a surprise factor and, uh, you know, no one's really thinking about Xerneas Break variants, I, I think, in their testing. Mm-hmm. So that was an early consideration for me. But honestly, once the Giratina promo came out and we actually tested Greninja with Lab in it, um, we had some pretty bad lists at, at first. <laughs> but once we got a decent list going, that was for probably like the week or two prior to Georgia. Like in my mind, I was open to other stuff, but I was kind of like Mark. So I was just like, yeah, just, Greninja is the best deck in format. And I would still say that, actually. Even though we didn't play Greninja, yeah. I would still argue Greninja is, without a doubt, the very best deck in the current format. Yeah, I, I agree for sure. Um, especially with Lab. It's crazy how, like, Lab, people are playing Lab, and they never did before. Once we started playing, like, three or four copies, we just immediately saw, like, how it was just wrecking people. Yeah. <laughs> like, Mega Gardevoir is already, like, a pretty winnable matchup but with silent lab you can just utterly crush them and yeah with guardy you know previously winning what was it dallas regional mm -hmm. i think yeah yeah dallas um, so we expected that there to be some hype for that and just have having people net deck like the winning lists and play that so that's another reason i thought green ninja was going to be a really solid play but um i think it kind of changed i think it was what was it, like a week and a half or no it's like probably like just a week before regionals actually we uh we went to a league cup or actually i did marcus wasn't able to go all right we went to jacksonville and then the next day was wilmington that i couldn't go to yeah but yeah it was the wilmington one i went to this league cup that marks didn't go to and i decided to play this jolteon glaceon regice deck just on a whim uh it's a deck we actually made a profile for on the channel like forever ago when ninja boy came out and so i just kind of updated it a little bit and took it to this league cup and that's really where I was, uh, I guess our choice for regional started to yeah. kind of fall into place. So I took this deck to this League Cup. I went undefeated technically, but I tied a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I immediately saw how strong this was against the current meta because no one plays Pokemon Ranger. Um, really, if you look at any of the best players and, and their list at any of these regionals, they're not playing Pokemon Ranger. Uh, I think... Gyarados, some Gyarados decks might play it on a whim mm -hmm. uh, because of Giratina, and some Volcanium players play it, but generally speaking, it's not a card that's in almost any deck other than uh, maybe a select few people who aren't at the top tables, for yeah. lack of a better term. Um, so yeah, I, I did pretty decently with this deck, and talking with Grant Manley, he actually... Uh, tipped me off to being that was the deck he was going to play but he was playing it a little bit differently than I was and he was nice enough to give me some feedback so just a quick shout out to Grant I think he actually got ninth or 10th at Georgia yeah, so I think I think ninth I could be wrong I think, yeah, yeah he probably was, ninth or 10th something yeah, he like was that. really close to, to making top eight so again just want to give a quick shout out to Grant for uh, uh, helping us with his um, opinion there so yeah once I Kind of started making this deck. I took it to Marcus. He still wanted to play Greninja at the time. Yeah, I was like, dude, Greninja beats it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was just convinced that Greninja just beats everything. Like, I don't know. I just wasn't losing with Greninja. So I was like, I don't know. I just think Greninja beats it. Yeah, but once we, we made a couple tweaks to the list, and that's really it. Uh, you know, yeah. Marcus took it to like a local. It's just crushed a bunch of people with it and just again preying on the fact that right now in the current meta no one's playing pokemon ranger yeah so i thought this was the perfect deck to play for mm -hmm. the tournament i again i personally still think greninja is the best deck but i would agree with grant who told me as he said it was the play and even though we didn't top yeah i would still argue till the day i die that this was absolutely the play for this regional yeah i, th I think this was for sure the play for georgia regionals um yeah, like he said, like I just <clears throat> we tested the deck the night before at Donut Man, and then uh, I I was like, I don't know, man, I'm still not convinced. Like, let me borrow it and play it at uh at this locals, and then he was like, all right, man, yeah, you can borrow it and play to locals, and then um, cause Eric wasn't gonna be able to make it like for the whole thing, he just kind of swung by later on, and said hey, and then I remember like he came by like 
a few rounds into the tournament and was like, so what you think about it so far, man? I was like, dude, I'm playing this at regionals. Like, the tournament wasn't even <laughs> over yet. And I was like, I'm playing this at regionals. Yeah, so I definitely think this was the right call. In hindsight, there is probably one or two cards that I would tweak in the list. But overall, the the deck is yeah, pretty sound. The concept itself is definitely the play. Yeah, so let's actually get into the exact list that we used. So it, for better or for lack of a better term, this is basically just Eveltal Garb, but with Jolteons and Glaceons instead. Mm -hmm. So getting into the Pokemon line, we have two Jolteon EX and two Glaceon EX. Those are our main attackers. Uh, two Glaceons, obviously for Greninja, that's the big one that it's going to be for. Yeah. And Jolteons for Volcanion, for Eveltal, Darkrai, Giratina, etc. And that's because Jolteon has the Flash Ray attack. Uh, for a lightning and DCE to 70, and your opponent's basic po or Jolteon's unaffected by the damage of basic Pokemon on your opponent's next turn. Mm -hmm. So again, this just walls against so many different things. And then Glaceon's kind of the opposite. For a water in DCE, it does 70, and it prevents damage from your opponent's evolution Pokemon. So you can kind of see you pick your main attacker based on the matchup. Uh, obviously, if you're going against Volcanion or, or Eveltal, you play Jolteon. Ninja, you play Glaceon, or even Megadex, you can play Glaceon as well. Uh, so those are kind of the two main attackers. Uh, we also play one Regice in the list, and Regice is kind of a unique uh, card because there's certain decks that, for example, if you go against Mega Mewtwo, uh, Glaceon doesn't prevent its damage change mm -hmm. uh, attack. So Regice actually has a bit of a better attack that still prevents that from happening to him. So Regice... Uh, Resistance Blizzard for a Water and DCE does 70, but it prevents damage and effects of attacks done by your opponent's Pokemon EX. So you can see all these different attackers have kind of their own unique uses and certain matchups that they are best in. Uh, and then the one stupid card that we played, <laughs> uh, a part of me really regrets playing it, but another part of me doesn't just because of how ridiculous it is. Yeah, We played one Snorlax GX. Uh, it's uh, it's definitely a ridiculous card. So uh, we mainly were playing it for the Polarizing Pancake GX attack, 5 energy. It does 210, but it puts your Snorlax to sleep. And so the reason we chose to play this card was because we found that a lot of times this deck, has, this deck struggles with closing out games since you're only doing 70 or 80 damage if you have like a Fury Belt. And so it just takes forever to, to beat somebody. Like you're going to beat them. But yeah. it just takes so long, so that like some games could even like go to time, and it's like you like it. You just look so like one sided. Like yeah, I'm definitely gonna win. It's just I don't have the time to win. Yeah, so. and that's definitely a big problem with this deck that I personally ran into over the weekend as well. Um, but yeah, Snorlax can help in those certain situations. That's why we played that. Um, so next up, we have a two two Garbodor line, and this is gonna really help with things like Greninja. Mm -hmm. That's really the main thing. We had the Giratina promo in here at one point, but again, we knew that the good players were going to play Silent Lab, and it was just going to counter the Giratina. So we took that out, put in the uh, Garbutter line, and that really helped this deck significantly. Um, and then two Shaman EX, just to use setup, just to draw cards and all that good stuff. And it is worth noting too, Shaman actually gives you an alternate attacker against Greninja. If you get two Garbodors up, you can just Sky Return loot them if your Glaceons are prized or something like that, because they will never have uh, an attack that can knock out a Shaman EX in one hit. Mm -hmm. So that's also, I, I never ran into that situation. Yeah. Well, actually I did uh, kind of in one game. I'll go over that later, I okay. guess. But uh, uh, generally speaking, it's not something you want to use, but you do have the option to do that. That's going to be the whole Pokemon line. Uh, the trainer cards are pretty straightforward. Nothing too crazy, but we do have one interesting tech in here. So for Sycamore 3N, um, I think most decks play six draw supporters. I think that's the average if I yeah. were just go out and, and say. Mm -hmm. But so I don't know. Seems pretty standard. Yeah, but I definitely like the seven draw supporters just because you don't want to bench Shamans because... Ideally, you don't want your opponent to have access to any free prizes on the bench. Right. You're trying to lock them out of being able to even damage your Pokemon. Mm -hmm. So I like the extra draw supporter that way, just to ensure you can not bench Shamans as much as possible. Uh, two Lysander is pretty straightforward. You have to three-shot, sometimes four-shot Pokemon, so you definitely need to Lysander up stuff to finish taking knockouts. Uh, one Ninja Boy, 
pretty self-explanatory. You know, we have all these different attackers and with Ninja Boy, it lets you swap one of your basic Pokemon out with another one in the deck. So it's pretty cool because, you know, if you are using like a Glaceon or a Jolteon and your opponent throws down something that your dude doesn't wall against, you can just Ninja Boy into it. But more importantly, it, it's what allows you to pull off the stupid Polarizing Pancake <laughs> GX attack. Yeah. And, uh... So yeah, that's why Ninja Boy's in there. And it's also cool because you can like uh, play aggressively and bench extra Shamans and then just Ninja Boy him into something else too. So definitely a great card in the list. And the one, I'd say this is really the only tech as far as the trainer cards go. That's going to be one Team Flare Grunt. So mm -hmm. Team Flare Grunt lets you discard an energy off your opponent's active. And I think we will both probably swear by this card. Yeah, absolutely. It, it really put in work over the weekend. <clears throat> it, just, it, it won me round one <laughs> like that, that's why i won <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's just Flare so it. strong in so many different situations because i mean the downside to this deck is that you do have to two and three or i'm sorry three and four shot pokemon sometimes and it allows your opponent to really set up their board to pr potentially mount some sort of counter attack against you so flare grunt kind of helps slow down your opponent in some situations and uh, we'll probably get more into, I guess, how it actually came into play in the tournament and uh, when we give you our matchups here in a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest is pretty standard. Four versus Seeker, four Ultra Ball, four Max Elixir, um, three Trainer's Mail, three Floatstone, uh, two Fury Belt, uh, one Super Rod. And then the only other card I would say I'm not sold on as far as the list is two Parallel City. Um, the there's a couple reasons we play it. You can reduce Greninja's damage output. Um, if, if you put the blue side facing your way, you can actually discard some of your Shamans that you had to bench. Uh, you can reduce Volcanion's damage output. Uh, it's just a disruptive card too. So especially against things like Mega Ray or Gardevoir. Uh, if you play parallel and have Garb out, it's just so strong. So strong against those decks. But... Um, you know this deck i don't even know if it needs a stadium like i, I yeah. don't know if it does to be honest it like it might not but it it, it definitely helped me so there were some times where it helped me just being able to bump the stadium um definitely i i think it the one matchup i could for sure say it needs a stadium in or at least a way like maybe a delinquent or something um is against mega mewtwo um oh, if yeah. they were to like shrine then they could just damage change and it would make it even longer like i go from like three or four shotting like four shotting a mega mewtwo to like eight shotting it or something because yeah. they keep healing uh the damage off even though they can't put it on reg ice it still comes off of themselves so i do i do think that there you either need to have a stadium to bump it or play a delinquent to get rid of the stadium for sure uh yeah yeah so i mean i definitely like a stadium being in the deck but yeah all the other cards, like, I just felt like their uses were very obvious. But Parallels, like, it probably did the least for me throughout the day. Yeah, but... like, even then, like, you can bump, you know, Shrine with anything else. Like, you could bump yeah. it with, like, a Lab or, like, uh, yeah. I don't know. So I guess you probably more... don't need Lab because you play Gar, but maybe, like, a um, uh, Faded Town. I, I don't know why I couldn't think of the name of that stadium. But, yeah, like, a Faded Town or something. Just some sort of counter stadium, basically. Yeah. Uh, Basically, what we're saying is just some counter stadium doesn't have to be parallel, but that just seemed like the most uh, generally useful out of all the ones to pick from. Not rough seas, though. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> you'll just never. You'll never beat Greninja. You'll just tie. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, uh, but then yeah, just the energy count from there. It's going to be four DCE, five lightning, five water. So ten basic energy kind of ensures that you are almost always or most of the time going to hit an energy off Max Elixir. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, uh, each of these attackers' attack costs only require one specific energy type, so it's usually pretty easily to yeah. power up your attackers, even if you don't hit the right energy that you need. Yeah. So that's the list, guys. Overall, I was pretty happy with it. Um, Storlax GX is honestly the only card I would definitely cut. Uh, I would bump up the Regice count to two, just because if you prize your Regice against Mega Mewtwo or Mega Gardevoir, it can be a very difficult matchup. Um, so that's probably the one thing that I would have definitely gone back and changed. Is there anything that, like, I guess after playing for the weekend that you think counts could have been changed or things should have been included on? Um, not, not, I wouldn't make a lot of changes. Like, again, like, the Parallel City could maybe be a faded town. Um, but I mean, again, like, Parallel was so clutch being able to, like, 
I, and you don't want to bench too many shamans, but in the scenarios where I did have to bench too many, like two both shamans even in some cases, um, I would just be able to parallel myself to take them off the board. Uh, it was good to reduce damage outputs of like a uh, Volcanion and Greninja. Um, like if I had a Garboder and the parallel facing myself, Regice was essentially a wall too because the Volcanion was doing 20 damage without being able to steam up uh, through the abilities. So it's doing zero damage against Regice, so I'm still just, like, one-shotting baby Volcanions. Um, I don't know. Like, as far as changes go, I don't really think there's many I'd make. Maybe drop the Snorlax GX for something. It was only useful in one game. The one game that it was useful in for me, it definitely uh, won me that game for sure. Um... But yeah, that, uh, there was only one instance where I I really ne needed Snorlax GX. Um, yeah, I can't really think of too many changes I would make about making it though. Yeah, I'm pretty much in in the same boat. Uh, I generally speaking like the list. Feel free to play it for yourself. It's super consistent. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I, I I did I was talking to Grant and we got to compare lists, and I'm not sure if he played Fury Belt in his. I forget. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm just referring to him just since he did. Uh, he did better than yeah, we did, so <laughs> he, he did a lot better than us. <laughs> so maybe he'll share his deck profile with someone online. Who knows? But anyways, mm -hmm. yeah. As far as our list goes, I still really liked it. Uh, other than the Snorlax, it worked really well. I never really had the deck crap out on me too much. Yeah, uh, yeah, it worked pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So next up, we'll kind of go through our matchups and just kind of tell you how we did throughout the day. Uh, Marcus did a little bit better than me, so I'm going to let him kind of close out this report on a, on a better note than mine. So uh, I, I ended up going 5 2 2 for the day. I finished uh, 117th. So top 128th. I got some championship points, but definitely not what I wanted to, to see. But um, as far as my matchups go, I was kind of quickly go through them. So first round, I played against a Rainbow Road deck, which. Uh, at first, I was actually really excited for it because Jolteon just straight up beats it. They don't really have a way to deal with it. But the girl I was playing against, it wasn't, I think, the standard type of Rainbow Road that you normally see with the Hoopa, you know, the Umbreon and Genesect and all that. Um, it was, so she played obviously Xerneas, but she also played all of the Stage 1 dual types. So she played Bisharps and Galvantulas. And she also played Xerneas Break as well. So... It was very awkward because I always had to kind of shuffle around my attacker and choose a different attacker to take knockouts with. So it was actually a pretty tough matchup uh, just because it wasn't the usual version of Rainbow Road that I was used to playing against. Uh, and this is actually a matchup where Flare Grunt was in really big handy because I would sometimes take a knockout on a Xerneas or something and then she would promote one of these uh, Stage 1 attackers to... Uh, swing into my Jolteon, and I would actually use Flare Grunt to take their energy off and two-shot them. Uh, so Flare Grunt really came in handy in that matchup. Um, I ended up winning that one. For my next matchup, I actually played against Franklin. Uh, I forget his last name. Uh, it's, he's from the Meta deck. They, If you guys don't follow them, I'll be sure to put a link in the description, but check them out. They're another great channel, too. But I, uh, yeah, I played against him. He was playing Greninja, and I was honestly really excited because I played Garboder play uh, Glaceon it's really not a bad matchup the only thing is you kind of need to get two Garboders out in play because they just arrow blitz for Lysanders to take out your your Garboders and so I was playing him uh, the first the first match I'm trying to think what happened oh yeah I started with Glaceon and I started powering it up and he just kept using Flare Grunt arrow blitzing for Versus Seekers to flare up my energy off and I never really got set up, so I just kind of scooped one on the game two. Uh, and that's where, I forget if I even won game two or not, but I forget. I think I actually may have lost that one too. Um, it, right now it's escaping me what happened, but I ended up losing to him, I believe. Oh yeah, he played a Ranger in his list, that's what it was. So round two, I already played against a deck that had Pokemon Ranger. Not excited for that at all. And so, yeah, I lost that one. A little discouraged, already faced a deck with Ranger. Round three, I played against Raul Reddy from Chaos Gym, another PokeTuber. If you guys don't follow, I'll be sure to put a link. Check him out. Uh, that channel puts out good stuff, too. Uh, I actually tied with him. Uh, he didn't play Ranger, from what I could tell, um, but I won game one. Uh, he won uh, game two. I prized a Trubbish, I believe it was, and then game three, time got called. 
So not the best start already. And it's really, I think, important with a deck like this that's trying to counter the meta. You really need to win your first several rounds. That way you're playing, uh, I guess, more consistently um, standard type of lists, if you know what I mean. Does that make sense, Marcus? Yeah, like more, more so like meta type decks, I guess. Yeah, because if you start out with kind of like a rocky record to start out with, you might get paired against more like janky rogue type of stuff. And that's actually what this type of deck will lose to. It's made to beat the meta. If you don't play the meta, you don't win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so round four, I played against another Greninja with Ranger. And I actually ended up tying. I think this is one of those games where if time didn't get called, I was in a position to win it. But nevertheless, it's just how it goes sometimes. I'll take a tie with a deck that plays Ranger. It could be worse. Uh, so next up, I played Mega Mewtwo. So obviously the plan is to get out Regice. But he plays Pokemon Ranger. <laughs> uh, I got donked my first game, I believe it was. And then the second game, he played Ranger. And that kind of wins him the matchup right there. So... I'm playing it's all these ranger decks. This is like the worst thing ever. <laughs> um, so next round, I played against a Volcanian deck. Well, I think, yeah, at this point, I am 1-2-2. Two, two. This is like the worst regionals uh, I think I've had yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, maybe this wasn't the play. But um, round five, I played against a Volcanian deck that did play ranger. I still managed to uh, squeak out a win against it. Uh, after that, I played against a Garchomp Zygarde EX deck. Um, I forget the guy's name. He was really nice. He's actually a fan of the channel too, Marcus. So oh, cool. it was cool that uh, he recognized me uh, and said, hey. So quick shout out to that guy. But I ended up beating that. Then afterwards, I played against a Mega Scizor deck, which is already a bad matchup because they play so much energy denial. But luckily, I was able to donk him game one. In game two, he did actually play Ranger, but he didn't see it in t until kind of the end of the game. And it was extremely close. Uh, I forget the guy's name, but really nice dude. And it was really, really close. But I ended up squeaking out a win against that. And then at the very end, I played against another Volcanian deck that ran Ranger. And uh, I believe I 2 0 him as well. So overall, I ended up winning out, which is nice at least, but I played against in total six decks that ran Pokemon Ranger, which is like not at all what I should have <laughs> played against. So I was super unfortunate there. That's kind of my sob story. Um, like I said, I still don't regret playing this deck one bit. I would still argue that this was the play. I think though, if I had won my first couple rounds and started out a bit better, I may have avoided some of these decks that played Ranger. But, um, no, can't do anything about it now. Finish five two two. It's still a decent little run, I guess. Um, yeah. But yeah, Marcus, how'd uh, how'd your day go? Um, I finished six three. Uh, not good enough for top sixty four, unfortunately. So I got sixteen championship points. I think it is. So Woo! basically, the most stressful league challenge of your life. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Basically, uh, round one, I played against Eric Rodriguez. It was the mirror. I was extremely surprised. He flipped over, like, we both flipped over, like, Jolteons, and I was like, what? And then he, like, goes through his stuff, and I'm seeing, like, water energy and everything, and Garb Odors, and I'm just like, oh, well, uh, <laughs> I'm playing the mirror now. So, um, pretty much, uh, me and Eric kind of talked about it before. We were like, you know, if we play the mirror, I guess we just flare grunt them over and over again. Like, that's kind of all we can do. And um, that's essentially how game one went um we were both just he would attack with reg ice like he would resistance blizzard i would flash ray he'd resistance blizzard i'd flash ray i'd eventually hit my um flare grunt i took off energy um he'd put another energy on <laughs> i would uh flash ray take off another energy he'd put one on eventually it came down to the point where he what he ran out of energy to put back on and so um he started ice beaming me i finally hit my last versus seeker for another flare run and then after he only had one energy on the reg ice he scooped and went to game two um game two it was just a really long time of me and him just saying <clears throat> resistance blizzard and flash ray again and so uh, i i we it went to time and i won round one uh round two i play against uh caroline parnas um she was playing Volcanion with ranger um so basically <laughs> i just got rangered a bunch and lost <laughs> uh Round three, I played against Hannah Eldada, Del Dada, I don't know uh, how to say her last name, but she was playing Waylord, and 
I, <laughs> I, I didn't know really what to do at first. Me and Eric were also kind of talking about that matchup. We were like, I guess we just kind of draw pass and then play ends and went in, like super odds when we need to. So that's essentially what happened. I just kind of draw a pass, draw a pass, and then until uh, it came down to the end of it, just play super odd and then end and stuff. But I won that one. Um, round four, I played against Dylan Bryan uh, from someone's PC. And uh, game one, he just kind of beats me. Like, it just, I don't know. I didn't get set up, and he did, like, quick. And uh, he just kind of beat me with his Vespaquin deck. Um, game two, I got two Garboders set up and a Glaceon. So I was like, he's not going to be able to use his Muse ability uh, to attack with a basic. Um, I've got Glaceon going, so he can't attack me with Vespaquins. I have two Garboders set up. He shouldn't, I don't think he should be able to just, you know, knock out both and whatnot. And then, uh, he, Lysander's both back-to-back -back turns, knocks out the Garboders, uh, attacks me with Mew. I had a Jolteon set up on the bench, so I Lysander his Vespiquin with a DCE and knock that out with, um, uh, Flash Ray. And then, uh, he just kind of, I forget, he draws through his deck somehow. And, um, like, with, like, Sycamore or Shaman or something like that. And then, um, he... Hits like a DCE and a a, a, a Vespaquin and then just kind of retreats and then knocks me out with Vespaquin. So he too owed me. Um, I I don't mind losing to Dylan. He's a great player. So um, next round I played against Travis McCain. He was playing Greninja and this is actually where I did get to Pancake. Um, <laughs> he uh, we were just kind of going. You know I was I was going the whole Garboder Glaceon route turn off his abilities, and then just uh, wall with Glaceon. Um, I had three prizes left to take, and then he promotes a, a uh, Beedrill EX. Um, he scrappers my float stones off the Garboders. And so at that point, I am just like, well, he's going to be able to just water shuriken over and over on this, on this Glaceon, and it's going to get knocked out. So I figured the only thing to do was to Ninja Boy into uh, Snorlax GX, Pulverizing Pancake. Um, so after I did that, I took two prizes. I had one more prize left, and then uh, after that, I just, like he shadow stitching me or something. I don't know. Um, and then I just Lysandered a Greninja that had damage on it already, and I was able to collapse it for 90 um, since my Snorlax didn't stay asleep. Uh, but yeah, so it was it was cool. I finally I got to use the pancake. I was like, well, if if nothing else, I at least got to pulverizing pancake GX today. Um, I remember I ninja boyed it out, and then I was like, pulverizing pancake GX, and he was like, okay. So uh, yeah, so it it did work there. That was the one game that I actually needed it, and it came through. Um, game two against him, we just kind of went to time. Like I was just Glaceon Garboder, and uh, he would just take off my tools over and over. So it was just a long drawn out game too that went to time. Uh, round three, I played against Dakota Nelson. Uh, he was playing Dark Tina, or Dark Dragons, really. I saw Salamance in there. And um, basically, both games, I just got turn one Jolty on Flash Ray. And pretty much after two turns of Flash Ray, game one, he was just like, uh, scoop, game two. Uh, game two, I did the same exact thing, and then he was like, all right, man, you got it. I'm not going to do this right now. <laughs> so... Uh, so Jolteon Flash Ray, definitely clutch against the big basic decks like that. Um, round, uh, whatever the round is after that, where am I at? Uh, seven. Yeah, round seven. I'm playing against Matthew Witted, I guess is how you say his last name. Um, he was playing Mega Mewtwo. Uh, basically, it was just Resistance Blizzard over and over again. He didn't play Ranger, so I just kind of Resistance Blizzard forever. It, it took so long to take knockouts because he's a Mega and I had to bump his shrine eventually with the Parallel City to get him to stop healing the Mega. So um, eventually I win, or actually no, I remember game one, uh, I opened Lone Shaman, didn't get anything, he started setting stuff up. Game two, I didn't get a way to get out of the Lone Shaman, so I was like, alright, I scoop game two. So then games two and three, it was, yeah, it was just a really long drawn out, just Resistance Blizzard over and over again. Uh, four shotting, sometimes five shotting and six shotting because of the shrine of memories and stuff. But eventually, winning the next two games. Um, round eight, I played against Professor N from Pokemon Evolutionaries. Uh, that's like one of the first channels I started watching, really. So, um, or not one of the first, but definitely one of the ones that I've been watching like for a, a longer period of time. They're they're a really cool channel. 
Um, so it was cool. I finally got to meet Professor N. Uh, unfortunately, we really didn't get very good games. Game one, I didn't get set up well. It, my deck wasn't moving as smoothly as it normally does, and then he won game one. Uh, and then game two, he just kind of donked me. Like, I opened Lone Trubbish. Uh, I play, I went first, opened Lone Trubbish, played N, didn't get a basic pass. He set some stuff up like normal. And then uh, he passed to me. Or no, he, sh he scattershotted me for 60. Um, I top decked an N whenever you know he passed to me, played it, didn't get another basic. And then he was like, dude, I'm so sorry. That is not how I wanted to win this game. Uh, but it happens. You got to expect your your deck to brick on you. I guess like one time during a gigantic, you know, huge tournament like this. Um, so lost to him. And then the last round, I played against Kevin Andrade. 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 Um, anyway, I played against Kevin, and he was playing a just the Turbo Dark deck, the Turbo Dark Rai. And uh, both games, I kind of just set up Lone Jolteon, just flash raid over and over again. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how that went. I just kind of flash raid, flash raid my way to victory both of those games. So, ended six three. Um, yeah, seventy first, I think. Was that yeah, seventy first place. Uh, I remember John Orgel. He got seventieth place. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, seventy first, uh, getting sixteen championship points. That whatever, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, our whole squad kind yeah. of uh, whiffed this weekend. <laughs> yeah, but. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I still 1,000% mm. don't regret this deck. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like I said, if I go back and change something, maybe I'd cut the Snorlax for another Regice. But other than that, like I, without a doubt, think this was the play for sure in a format where uh, people are opting to cut Ranger from their decks. But yeah, um, I guess any final thoughts? What are some of the pros and cons, would you say, for the weekend? <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Pros, I got to use Snorlax GX once. Oh, yeah, um, that's like the pro of the weekend, yeah. I think. <laughs> I, uh, I got to Pulverizing Pancake. It was awesome. Um, uh, I, you know, it was, I, I think the deck was good. Like, I don't think it was the wrong play. Like, I think I just, I, I don't know. Um, I played against Volcanion and got Rangered, and then I bricked against Professor N, and um, Dylan Bryan, he's just a great player. He just found his way around it, around the lock and everything, so, um, I think it was a great play other than that. Like, I, I don't regret playing it at all. I think this is... I don't think I would have done much better uh, had I played, like, Greninja, maybe. Um, a lot of people were were kind of ready for Greninja, too, I think. Yeah, I um, think that's another thing that really made me want to switch to this deck, too, is because cause the Giratina promo came out, like, a week or so before this, and so there was a lot of talk around that, and people were just ready for Greninja, like Marcus said. Yeah. Like, all the good players were changing over to Silent Lab, and uh, people were starting to tech against the Greninja Mirror and stuff like that. Even we were in our list that we were uh, trying out, had techs to beat the Mirror and all that type of stuff. So, uh, that's one thing, just me personally. Um, you know, playing the meta is fun and stuff, but I don't like playing a deck that has a big target on its head. Uh, usually just because, again, people tech against it and they're prepared for it, like we're saying. So. Right. So that is another thing that really made me want to play this too because no one was expecting it. Like we said, the meta had shifted away from playing Ranger. I think people played it like at the beginning of the season then realized it was bad. Yeah. And so that's what we were trying to prey upon. And you know, like you heard from my sob story, I got mm -hmm. six opponents that played Ranger. <laughs> but Marcus, his path to victory yeah. was like a lot more of like an accurate representation of how this tournament probably went for... Uh, or mm -hmm. how it should have gone for this deck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I only played against one Ranger, yeah. And that's Volcanion. And that's like, yeah. and that's expected. And uh, Volcanion's still a winnable matchup, even with Ranger, too, mm -hmm. it's worth saying. Um, but yeah, I think the big pro for me over, like, for this deck playing it is Team Flare Grunt. Mm -hmm. Team Flare Grunt just does so much work. Team Flare Grunt was so good. Yeah. Um, like, not only are they allowed to attack you, but then you're going to make their setup even slower by taking their energy off and stuff. So, yeah, Team team Flare Grunt was definitely used a lot over the weekend. Definitely so. Cons, Pokemon Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is, like, the worst thing about this weekend, Pokemon Ranger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I I mean, I, I, I always hate complaining about how tournaments are run because I know uh, all of the staff works so hard to try to make the experience as smooth as possible, especially since we know some of the judges who are 
you know, yeah. they're busting their butt the whole weekend. But mm-hmm. just in general, this tournament was not run that well. Uh, like it was took forever in between rounds. It's like sometimes what was it like an hour or something? Yeah, we had they they said no lunch break, but we had like a lunch break every round. Um, Basically, essentially, yeah. Like like there were it was about an hour between rounds. I'd say sometimes not quite always an hour, but I mean, it, uh, I think like the tournament started late. I heard that they hadn't expected six hundred and eighty six players, so they had to get my, more tables set up and stuff too. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. We forgot to even mention that. Yeah. This was, yeah. as far as I know, this was actually the biggest regional that has ever been had. It is six hundred eighty something. I forget yeah, the exact number. Six eighty six. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So just shy of seven hundred people playing in this tournament. Absolutely insane. So any player who manages to get through this type of field is definitely good. So just a shout to, um, you know, everyone who actually did make day two mm-hmm. and, and top eight and eventually win, and. Um, yeah, I guess for you guys who didn't get to go, uh, I guess we can go over some of the decks that ended up winning. Yeah. Let's see. I have it pulled up on my phone. I'm just trying to find it. Yeah, so top eight was Turbo Darkrai, and this is in the, in the final standings order. So Chris Siakala, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, so I apologize, Chris. But he was playing the Turbo Darkrai deck that started to get some hype around the time of this tournament. Uh, Dylan Bryan, which Marcus played against, got second with his Vespa Quinn Zep Strika deck. Uh, Carl Satavi played Vespa Quinn Zep Strika. We actually featured him in a, a League Cup video, too. So if you guys want to see Carl in action, I believe he was actually playing the same deck. So I'll put a link if you guys want to check that out, too. Uh, Kyle Sablehouse played Turbo Darkrai. Ahmed Ali played Mega Rayquaza. Uh, Louis Zambrana played Mega Rayquaza. William Boatman played Vespa Quinn's up Strika, and Chip Ritchie filling out the eighth spot played Mega Rayquaza. Yeah, which is also really interesting. So let's we can talk about this too for a second before we close out the video. Um, Mega Rayquaza is a deck that no one I think yeah. was really talking about. I don't think anyone really expected that. Um, yeah, cause... maybe like a li- like because there were some Mega Rayquaza Jolteon variants going around at League Cups and stuff. But I don't think many people were expecting it to do so well just because it loses. I, I feel like it loses to Parallel Garb. Yeah, just that combo alone. Yeah. It doesn't matter what deck it is. Parallel Garb just beats Mega Ray. Yeah. And I think that's for the longest time that's why it hasn't done well this season. Because all the Eveltal Garb Odor that's been running around that plays right. Parallel Garb. Yeah. Or Mega Mewtwo's played Parallel Garb. It's mm-hmm. just a common thing. So I think that's really what has kept Mega Ray from doing well this season. But... Uh, it's worth noting, actually, no Eveltal made day two, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I don't think I don't think they did. I don't remember seeing any Eveltal make day two. So, and that's pretty insane because for the first three major tournaments of the season, Eveltal has just been crushing it. It was like yeah. the undisputed best deck, yeah. like by far. Right. Um, but I think maybe what have happened is over the past like couple tournament cycles, mm-hmm. um, it, people have been teching against it. The whole Vespaquin Zeb Strike a deck became popular. Uh, I think that has deterred some people from playing it. Electrode uh, decks started popping up. So I think Eveltal just had too big of a target on its head um, to really do well. I think that and Greninja were probably the decks uh, most people were pre- yeah. most prepared to play against. Those were the decks to beat. Yeah, yeah I think so. And uh, so, yeah, Eveltal just didn't really show up. I, I think none of the good players, or I, I don't mean it like that, but I think most of the top players who had been previously topping the regionals uh, with Eveltal weren't playing it anymore. Right, yeah. That, so, yeah, Eveltal didn't really show up. So as a result, that's one less parallel garb deck for Mega Ray to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and with Mega Gardevoir being so popular, that is such an easy win for Rayquaza. I yeah, think that, absolutely. I think that also allowed Mega Ray to, to come in and do well. So really interesting uh, uh, day two, top 32, top eight results from this regional. Uh-huh. So... But yeah, guys, definitely an interesting regional. Um, I plan on going to St. Louis, which is in March, I believe, and probably Virginia. I, those are kind of the ones for sure that I will be going to. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure, Marcus. I'm not sure what your schedule is yet. So Yeah, I, I won't be able to make it to St. Louis. I, if I go to another regional, it'll be Virginia. Uh, I'm going to try and make it to Virginia for sure. It just depends on what work and everything is looking like. Yeah, that's probably like the next closest one. All the others are a little bit further away from us. Yeah. But yeah, so 
that's pretty much it for our tournament report, guys. I'll be sure to actually, uh, I think I want to do a PTCGO video. I'll show how this deck looks in action at some point. That way you can see, you know, how it actually performs if you don't want to build it yourself. Right. So whenever that goes up, I'll be sure to put a link in the description or on this video somewhere. But yeah, if you like these tournament report style videos, uh, definitely be sure to let us know with a thumbs up and, uh, you know, a comment saying that it's actually kind of yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we won't do them anymore. But, um, but yeah, as usual, feel free to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our merch over at rarecandytcg.com. If you can pick up something to help support the channel, it would mean a lot to us. But with that, we appreciate you watching, and we will see you for the next one.